Hi, how are you today? I thought we would make this card. This is going to be one of the Technique Stampers um, projects and um, we'll do it a few different classes. Um, the minute I saw these dies and how they're so layered, I loved them. Um, and I've seen so many people using them. I wanted to give them a try. And here is what I came up with. And I must say, I really, really like it. So let's get started. We'll be using the Blossom, Blossoms in Bloom stamp set and some of the words. The stamp set many mates have um, additional words to choose from. The words here are nice, but I wanted a few different fonts, so this stamp set works out great. And then also, yeah, I know I'm putting lots of stamp set options in your path, but these are great words too. Um, when I was looking at this stamp, I thought, oh, that would perfectly fit into the storybook label punch, but you probably already know this. If there's this little note down at the bottom that says images are 70% the size, that means that the stamp set is smaller here than in real life. So this is what it really looks like, and it's considerably different. And will it fit? You know, looking at it, it might fit, but it's really tight. But it's a little deceiving. So if you ever see that little note there at the bottom, you know to make sure what does a stamp set really look like. So we'll be using Storybook Label Punch for the greeting. And Many Layered Blossoms is the die set that will cut out this outline and then also the solid piece. I'll show you the, the dies in just a minute. And there's um, quite a few other dies included. And then for this frame, we'll use Ornate Layers. So, you ready to get started? Um, I have these two, but I want to try a different color combo because when you come to class, I'm going to have lots of combos in front of you. So I want to give you another option. Let me show you the insides of these. This one is using this stamp, which is a bit watercolor, um, full strength in Highland Heather, full strength in Saffron, the little dots, and that turned out just fine. But to get a softer look, for this one here, see how it's not solidly um, blushing bright on the inside? It's a little bit softer. You could really tell once I open it up. So for this effect, I used a sponge, and then the words, and then I stamped off the saffron flowers and centers. So here are these two. And we won't be doing these. We'll be doing something just a little bit different. The same but different. Okay, so I'll put these up here. Did I introduce myself? This is Jilly Bling, jillybling.com. And I will list all of the products used on my blog and pictures. Okay. So here are... I'm running out of room over here. Um, the dye brush, if you haven't used it, it works great to get all these little pieces out of the dye and then also out of your paper. I wanted to make sure to mention that. And then I have a little pokey, or you can use the picker upper tool that has a pokey in the end of it, and that helps take all these little pieces out too. But a combination of these two, and the dye brush makes all the difference. I have this here. I'll show you what that's all about in just a minute. Okay, this is for the words. Let me do it while it's here. This time, I think, in I Like You A Lot. I like that. I'm going to stamp that and punch it out in Rococo Rose. Perfect. And I'll be using the rose more. Um, and where's the punch? Okay. 
Boy, I hope it fits. Oh, it fits just fine. Make sure it's straight. Words. Okay, so we're done with this. Set the words off to the side. Done with that. This is for the inside. So over here I have, you know, instead of calling this Blossoms and Bloom card, I should call it just buy some wax paper card. Because if you put wax paper between your paper and the die, it comes out so much easier. It's so worth it. It's worth running to the store, coming home, and then doing your projects. That's how worth it it is. So using the ornate, what is it, ornate frames? ornate layers, I will use the die cut and that's what creates this. Here it is, still has a wax paper on top of it. Look how clean that came out and then I'll just lift this, throw it away. For some reason that's beautiful and I'm thinking, oh I somehow need to use that but maybe not today. Okay you see that there's just what maybe three little remaining um, pieces in there so it, it's worth it okay four okay five five out of two hundred that's pretty good odds okay so that's going to be on the outside this is um, card base paper this is pear pizzazz. So this project here, you can see the edge of it, is Smoky Slate. And then this one is pear pizzazz. I keep on wanting to add more colors in there. Like, wait a minute. I need to calm it down a bit. This is going to go in here. These pieces will go in here. This is going to go on top of the floral blossoms die cut. So this is Rococo Rose and here is the die. When you look at these two dies when they fit together just like that. So I'll flip them over. This one see this much area? This one is a bit bolder and this one is a bit more delicate. This just provides the outline. And this provides, I would say, most of the flower, but it's maybe half of the flower. So I think on this one with the purple posy paper and the heather stamp, see this bit right here, the lighter purple? That is this die. And when I have them cut out, you'll know what I mean. Okay, so I'm going to cut out the outline detail with the wax paper and I will cut out the blooms in the Rococo Rose. Here they are, still with the wax paper on them. The dye brush will come in handy. I'll pull off that wax paper. Isn't that pretty? I don't think I'd be able to stick that because what adhesive would stick to wax paper. There it is. Okay, and now the foil paper and copper I just want this little bit. Take off the wax paper. Isn't that pretty? Okay, it's getting a little crazy here. Okay, all your pieces, they're ready to come up. Okay, little magic going on. Oh, 
and I know you are going to ask, where did you get that tray that perfectly holds that? The container store. Perfectly holds my Big Shot die brush. Oh, speaking of the Big Shot, we should be able to get it in. As a demonstrator, I think it might be in August. And everyone else? You could get it in September. It's almost here. Okay, watching this, is it therapeutic or is it boring? So my friend Linda just stopped by and she says, you know, I'm one of those people who every time I see your videos, I see it. I sit down, watch the whole thing, and I give you a thumbs up. There's one other person out there that always does that too. I love to know who it is. More than love to know who it is, I say thank you. But um, Linda saw me getting ready, and she goes, Oh my gosh, I love that. I love that card. She mentioned something interesting, which is true. That while everyone has been quarantining, there's been a whole lot of gardening and home improvement and yard improvements going on. And also a whole lot of crafting. Maybe it's been good for everyone to take a break from life. I kind of liked it. Well, I wish all these pieces were out more. Maybe if I ran it through the big shot back and forth, rather than just one pass, it would be a little bit easier. But they're not hanging up in there. And I think in the end, it's so beautiful, it'll, it'll be worth it. Okay, almost done. Hear the tractor going out there. All those trees we had taken down are fell. Time to cut them up. When you cut a long tree into chunks, what's the word for that? This is a quiz. Oh, I know, I know. Bucking it. Bucking it up. So they're out there doing that and getting all those logs out of there. Okay. Two more, one more, okay, one more, there it is. Isn't that beautiful? Can you see it? Let me see. This is just distracting stuff. I'll put this up. Okay, there, now you can see how pretty it is. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so, this piece doesn't fit that way. It fits this way. And the next step is to take your, oop, I have the glue across the room. I'll use this one. And I'm going to put glue just around the outside edges. Not so much, maybe a few spots on the inside, but just to hold it in place. Probably should have had one of these done in advance. Oh, sorry about that. But I know you wanted to know how to do all these little steps, right? Putting it on the inside of the flowers, and I don't know that I should do that, because I don't know that the foil outline is going to cover it. And after I get them stuck together. I'll set them off to the side and I'll work on the rest of the project. The next step was going to be using the polymer stamp and 
you can either stamp it full strength ink or sponge it. So the purple one is stamped full strength ink and the pink one, the blushing bride, is using um, sponges on top of the stamp and then stamping it on the white paper, the ornate layers white paper. So you'll have your choice of doing it either way. I'm really happy with the way that the Blushing Bride one came out. It's a bit softer, so I'll probably do that again on um, this rose project. Okay, that's good for the glue. Now, I'm looking at this little leaf bunch sticking up, and I know that goes down here. and just get them lined up. Line up the other end. And good thing the glue dries clear because any overage, it's just fine. Isn't it nice how this gold, it um, makes the little flower centers? Oh, I could have done that on the, with the stamp. That's okay. This bundle, you could go crazy with all the different variations of details. Okay, it's getting stuck together. Almost done. How's that look? Oh, I see it lift in there a little bit. I think the glue will pull them together as the glue dries. Okay, so I'm going to set this off to the side and just let it dry. Okay, so now on to using the stamp and putting the stamp on this white paper. I have a good, bad example. And those of you that don't know me, you're like, what are you talking about? So this is my good, bad example. I stamped it, inked it up, stamped it. I love how soft it came out, but when it came time to set this on top, and it will go just like, I'm looking at this white hole, like that, that. It didn't fit on the card. So you have to, I'll show you how to figure it out. Okay, so this is just stamping at random. And if I center the white on here, I guess it could work, but it would be better if I placed this big stamp a little bit more thoughtful. So uh, now I'll show you a good example. This is my bad example. This is drying. So on, oh, and you know, since this is polymer, I'm going to pull out my foam pad. Okay, foam pad, white paper, words. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. Um, think about where do you want this to be on your card? You want it centered. So I'm thinking this amount equal that amount, this down here. Okay, so to me that, that looks like it's good enough placement. So when I go to stamp this, I'll have it all inked, and I'm going to ink it in just a second. And I'm going to stamp it, but this is going to help me determine where to place the stamp. And another thing is there's one flower at the top, two flowers, two flowers. That will help you from going around in circles. I know it's going to be stamped just about like that. I'll leave this here for right now. But I'm going to apply just a little bit of ink to the stamp because I want it to look like this. Just a hint. So I'll use a Cocoa Rose. I probably could use a completely different color to shine through there. 
but I'm not that courageous quite yet. <laughs> okay, so here's a sponge. I'm going to put it mostly in the center. The less ink, I can't hardly even see it on, I can't see it at all on here. The less ink on the sponge, the softer it gets. I'm going to ink it one more time and I'll start just in the center. And then I know that the ink is kind of running out on here. So I'm going to kind of soften up because I don't want a big rectangular sponge mark. Okay, so that's inked, ready to be stamped on here. And looking at this, I want it to go right about here, just thereabout. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now you can see the ink on there. Ooh, I hope this one comes out good. I like pink. It'd be pretty in um, different yellows too. Okay, you ready? <gasps> Look how pretty. So, now these centers are going to be filled by these flower centers, which will help me line it up. There, there. Isn't that pretty? And the words. Should go on green or gray? Ooh, the gray is elegant, huh? Okay, I might be changing things up. Don't tell anyone, I'm changing it up. Okay, this is Smoky Slate. Okay, let's see how it looks. Somehow I just like that better. Okay, insides, I'm changing. Inside papers, that's granite. How about that, that, and I'm gonna stamp on this in just a minute. There, okay. Yeah, I like that. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry just a little bit more, and then I'm gonna put some ribbon on here, but in the meantime, I'm going to stamp this so it's similar to that. Okay, so once again, Rose is going on a little heavy right now. Lightening up, heavy, lighter, lighter, lighter. Now when there's not much ink on here, I'm gonna ink up more. I think I'm done with the rose. I'll close it up. Okay, and I don't want to get ink on my pad. So this one I have going that angle. Should I just put it right in the middle? Nah. Where should I put it? Okay, it's turning out like the other one. Yeah, that's pretty. Okay, so I like you a lot. I think maybe I'll just leave the words, no words on the inside, just on the outside. So for the flower centers, it's this one. I think these little guys are for these little flowers. Oh, I could try putting some of those little flowers on. That one I already did yellow. What color flower center should I do? I think yellow is the key. Um, so this one I did saffron and I stamped off. This one I did full strength saffron. I think I like the, the stamped off way a little better. So that's here. Here's saffron. Stamp off. Yeah, that's real soft. That's nice. Oops.
<laughs> okay, and this one I put little yellow flowers on. I think if I did pink, it would get too jumbled. Are there such thing as gray flowers? Should I try that? I know I want to do um, just a hint of gray, the smoky slate leaves. I'll start with that and then see. So this one I did this oak looking leaf. This one right here, maybe on this card I'll do this leaf. Stamped off. Oh, it looks like here's another leaf. Okay, there's two of them. A big one and a mini one. Stamped off. Big leaf. Yeah, just a hint of a leaf. Little leaf. Little leaf. I hope you could see them. I might need to re-ink my pad. Okay. So, they're just really slight. I think I do need to do a few of those little flowers, though. Um, what color? How about... Well, Honey's home. Okay. So I'll do the little flowers. I'll try petal pink. I'll see how those look. Let me check here. Oop, that's too soft. That's not bad. Petal pink. Little flowers. It's kind of strong. Well, they're cute. I think there's a second flower in here. Yeah, I like that. Okay, that's good for the inside. I don't know, you think it needs words? I'll try putting it in here, see how it looks. Here's the layer. Okay, so that goes inside. Inside. And I could always add words on. You know, that's kind of pretty. It's very simple. But the outside is a little bit busy, so that might be a good thing. Okay, so inside done. Oh, I do like the words in there. What do I have on the outside? I like you a lot. What would go with that? Um, I'll just leave it for now. Or should I put thinking of you? That would be nice. Okay, so I'm going to do that in Smoky Slate. Now put it a little bit off to the side. Right there. Okay. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so for the top, I'll put dimensionals on here. Let's 
regular size dimensionals. So the next decision is what size ribbon? Okay, one, one, two, one, two. There it is, right in the middle. Even though the sides are wider than top and bottom, that's fine. <clears throat> so this is gonna go right here and this needs more glue. Kathy gave me this glue and I love it. Thank you, Kathy. Liquid glue has become part of my everyday supplies. So it doesn't have to be everywhere, but just enough to hold it in place. Here, there. Good enough. And this flower center perfectly fits over that. This flower center fits over that. There it is. Okay, so now the final decision is which ribbon? This one has the metallic edge, white and silver, and then the polka dotted tulle. This one is using the new granite, I think it's granite gray satin, right here. Shimmer ribbon. Granite gray. Isn't that pretty? And then, of course, the polka dotted tool again. So I know I want polka dotted tool. And just a little bit to stick out the side. And you know, you might miss it, but then when you see it, <clears throat> that should make you love the card that much more, I'd like to think. Okay, so for the other ribbon with the words, this picks up the copper and the rose. Um, I think I'm going to try this one. Gathered Ribbon for Coco Rose. So, let's see, do I want just a little bit? This one I have one piece folded over. This one I have it folded over and then back again. Well, let's see how busy it is. If the card is too busy, I'm going to put more of this on. I know I want the end at an angle. Okay. Yeah, I think I want I want a zigzag. Okay. So to do the zigzag, I am going to use tear tape. I would use my um, Stamp and Seal Plus, but it's in a project kit somewhere. Let's see if I can find it. I don't know where it is, but that would 
that is really sticky and that probably would hold everything really well. But tear tape also does and tear tape is still in the catalog so tear tape it is. So I have a few strips of tear tape because this ribbon is a little bit what's the opposite of pliable? Not pliable. It's not all that bendy and flexible. Okay, so start out, and I want a little bit to show right here. Then I want the fold to show here. And another fold here. Oh, I might need more tape up there. And then trim it. Okay, let's see how that looks. Oh, that's nice. That really picks up the copper and the rose. And then this, oh, I kind of like it over because under it gets lost. Okay, tear tape. It's putting a lot of pressure on you. So I'm putting the polka dotted tool right in there. Tear tape on top of that. Oh, that's nice. Oh, I should have tried doing one the other directions. Nope, the flowers are going the wrong way. Okay, so now I think this is too big. I could trim it. I think I need to do more to hold that down. Um, and I'm going to use dimensionals. So let me start out with dimensionals. I'll make sure that they're kind of sticking to the paper a bit. Maybe. If there's any paper showing. Yeah, you can see it a little bit better. See how it's kind of popping up? Maybe I will put a little bit of glue and put some pressure on it. Oh, the tear tape is doing pretty good. Okay. Right about here. Okay, it is a little bit overboard, but somehow I like it. I'm going to make this just a little bit shorter. Okay, there it is. I hope you could tell how pretty it is. Very soft in there. A little bit gilded and over the top up here but somehow I like it I hope you do too if you like it can you give me a thumbs up and I will put all the products used on my blog and I look forward to seeing you next time thank you bye